Hey guys, today I wanted to analyze the most likely 2024 presidential election matchup, and that is the one where Kamala Harris will face off against Donald Trump, the Vice President of the United States versus the former President of the United States. This is the most likely matchup as right now, Kamala Harris has the highest chance of winning the 2024 Democratic presidential nomination over Joe Biden right now. It has been over Joe Biden for a very, very long time. Of course, if Joe Biden does run for re-election, Kamala Harris is not going to run against him. But in the case that Joe Biden, the most, uh, you know, the oldest president in American history, if he does not run for re-election, Kamala Harris is the clear front runner for the nomination in less than four years. And Joe Biden, just in case, uh, if you guys, some of you guys were unaware, he is not going to announce that he's not running for re-election anytime soon. If he does plan on not running in 2024, he's going to try to announce that as late as he possibly can, so he does not become a lame duck president, which won't help him at all in getting some of his goals achieved. However, for uh, um, Joe Biden, if he does run for re-election, we can expect a, a announcement a little bit earlier, but he'll definitely, you know, talk that through with Kamala Harris so they don't run against each other in 2024. But Kamala Harris, in terms of the betting odds, has the highest chance of winning that nomination. For former President Trump, he also leads right now over Ron DeSantis and Nikki Haley. Uh, Trump has been in the lead basically this whole time, with the exception of early January after the Capitol insurrection. Um, but his chances right now are at 25. Ron DeSantis has been catching up, you know, increased by quite a bit since the ter uh, beginning of Joe Biden's presidency. And then Nikki Haley, her chances have been pretty low here um, in the last couple of weeks. So right now, definitely it's favoring DeSantis, but Trump is still at the very top with the highest chance of winning the GOP nomination in 2024. Um, so you would have a former vice president running against a former president, not former vice president, sorry about that, a vice president of the United States running against a former president. So I'm going to start off by filling in the solid states for Kamala Harris and Donald Trump. And after I do that, I want to take a look at the popularity of Kamala Harris and why it may be an issue for her. Because compared to Joe Biden, Kamala Harris is the clearly less popular candidate. Um, Donald Trump is more unpopular, but you know, you saw he was more popular in 2020 than he was in 2016, but he was still able to win the 2016 presidential election. Uh, so I'm going to fill in all these states. In these states, I think they're all going to be solid margins, as in over 15%, because Donald Trump is going to do better against Kamala Harris than he did against Joe Biden. I just think that um, there's no way that Kamala Harris does better than Joe Biden in 2024. However, if you look at the chances, or not chances, but if you look at the popularity of Kamala Harris, her favorability right now is currently plus four in the positive. So she's at plus four, but only 47% of Americans approve of her on average. As for Donald Trump, it is currently negative 15.4 in terms of his favorability, um, which has been pretty terrible. Um, in all honesty, only 39% of Americans approve of him and over 55% view him very unfavorably. For Joe Biden, I'm going to compare this to Joe Biden's. He currently has an 11% favorable um, favorable approval rating, so 11% in the positives for President Biden's approval. So um, Joe Biden clearly and has been throughout this entire election season and Joe Biden's presidency, Joe Biden has always been more popular than Kamala Harris. Kamala Harris is a lot more of a Hillary Clinton than Joe Biden, but she's still um, favorable, which um, will definitely benefit her. Uh, and then if you look at this Donald Trump now at 101 electoral votes on this map to Kamala Harris with 180. Before we go any further, make sure you join my Discord server if you have not, the link to which is at the very top of the description below. Uh, so next, I want to fill in the likely states for both Kamala Harris and Donald Trump. Right now, Kamala Harris is likely states, not as much as Joe Biden's. I have the at-large vote in Maine as likely for Kamala Harris, as well as Colorado and New Mexico. Those are the only likely states they have for Kamala Harris on this electoral map. While for Donald Trump, it's not very many. We have Indiana, South Carolina, Alaska, Iowa as well as Ohio and then the second district of Maine so um, it's it's a little bit um, it's six states uh, and the reasoning why is because I think that in the two states of Colorado and New Mexico Joe Biden won these with a likely margin I don't see Kamala Harris dropping below 7% in these states uh, nor do I see her going under 7% in Maine either uh, but for Donald Trump he will probably win Ohio by a likely margin again. It's not going to go over 15%, but I think he will definitely win these states by 10% maybe because if he's on 2016, he flipped these states from blue to red, winning them by 8% and 9%. 
2020, not much of a change, only 8% and 8%. Uh, as for South Carolina, it's not going to go over 15, nor is Alaska. And the reason why I gave the state of Indiana as a likely state to Donald Trump in this scenario is because his vice president, Mike Pence, was from Indiana. And I think that with him barely able to win Indiana with a solid margin without Mike Pence as his VP, which I think is very unlikely to happen, I think that Indiana will not be a solid state for President Trump in 2024. Um, so this gives Kamala Harris approaching 200 electoral votes, Donald Trump approaching 150. And before we go any further, I want to take a look at former VPs that have run for the presidency. Um, so Kamala Harris is a vice president, of course. And if you look back at history, vice presidents have a 50% chance of winning the presidency if they are on the general election ballot, which means they have to win their party's nomination. And out of all of the former vice presidents uh, in the past that have won their party's nomination, six out of 12 of them have won, six out of 12 of them have lost. So Joe Biden, of course, won. Al Gore lost. George H.W. Bush, uh, he won, of course, by a landslide. Um, Ronald Reagan's VP in 1988. Walter Mondale got destroyed. You can look back at this all the way until the 1700s. So typically, VPs, they, um, they do have a pretty good chance at winning their party's nomination after being the vice president. However, um, in terms of winning the general election, there really is no trend. And whether or not you know, the president, their VP for uh, matters, it's pretty unclear because you had Walter Mondale, uh, the vice president for an unpopular president, Jimmy Carter, he got destroyed, got clobbered by Rich, uh, by Ronald Reagan. However, George H. Lee Bush, he was a VP under a popular president, Ronald Reagan, and he was able to win. But Al Gore, Bill Clinton was a popular president. If you look at his approval rating, he was a popular president, but Al Gore still ended up losing to George uh, w. Bush. Uh, he did win more votes, but he did lose the Electoral College. So there's a lot of factors that come into these things. And, you know, Richard Nixon, Dwight D. Eisenhower was a very popular president, but Richard Nixon still lost in 1960. So um, Kamala Harris, as a vice president herself, uh, I think that with Joe Biden and, you know, with Donald Trump running against her, I think the you know, Kamala Harris does have a pretty good chance in 2024. So I want to move on to filling in the lean states for both of these candidates, starting off with the lean states for Vice President Harris. Uh, I have uh, two of them. These are the states of Minnesota and New Hampshire. And I actually realized that I forgot to put in Virginia. Virginia is going to be a likely state for Kamala Harris. This was likely for Joe Biden. It was not likely for Hillary Clinton, but I think Kamala Harris will be able to win this state by over 7% in Virginia. So that's another uh, likely state for the vice president. For the former president, he has a few lean states as well. Um, starting out with Florida, definitely. I think that Kamala Harris running against Donald Trump is not going to be beneficial for Kamala Harris in the state of Florida. Um, she was one of the reasons why Joe Biden lost Florida by you know the margin that he did, um, the margin 3.4% compared to 1.2% in Florida in 2016. Many of the Cuban and Latino voters in Florida, they wanted to see a, um, you know, a Latina or someone, you know, more closely related to that as Joe Biden's running mate pick. But because of BLM and the pressure that it had on Joe Biden and his campaign, they went with Kamala Harris, um, the more status quo, um, more establishment and uh, a person of color, but not, you know, a person of Hispanic descent. So that's why, you know, they gravitated more towards Donald Trump, as well as Texas. I think Texas will be a lean state. I don't see Kamala Harris, you know, lowering this margin to a tilt state. But I do think that Kamala Harris will be able to lower this margin, maybe around three to four percent, um, the margin for Donald Trump, because as you can see 2012, this was a solid red state, 16 percent, 2016, nine percent, you know, down six percent, 2020, um, 5%, so it went down by another 4%. Um, so the margin here in Texas has gone down 11% since Donald Trump has taken office. And if you look at, you know, 2024, the demographics in Texas will continue to shift to the left just in terms of the population makeup there. Uh, if you look at, you know, which places have shifted, you can see in Texas, it was quite a big shift. Um, if I can uh, get closer, if I can zoom in on this. Uh, so yeah, if you look at this, um, you did see a lot of shifts to the right. However, those had, you know, thousands to, you know, sometimes even hundreds of votes. So they don't really matter that much. 
Uh, but if you look at the bigger urban areas in Texas, they're all moving to the left. And I mean, six points to the left in this county is much more important than, let's say, um, 40 points to the right in a county where less than 200 people voted. So um, it's a little bit deceiving, but in general, Texas is clearly moving to the left. Uh, and it has been for decades now at this point. Um, so Kamala Harris, 223. Donald Trump, 220 electoral votes. Um, I want to give some states to Donald Trump, starting off with the tilt states I have for former President Trump, starting off with Wisconsin. I do think that Trump will be able to flip back Wisconsin. Um, he just does well in the Rust Belt. That is just a fact. Donald Trump does well in the Rust Belt. Um, you know, you can you, you know you can reason out why, but he just does well. You know, 2012, this was all blue. 2016, it was almost all red. The only blue states here were Illinois because of Chicago and Minnesota, which is the most Democratic state in the country in terms of voting for Democrats. They have voted for a Democrat in every single election since the 70s. So Minnesota is definitely you know, a pretty solid blue state. Um, the margins aren't always the best for them, but they have consistently voted Democrat for over four decades. Um, but Donald Trump flipped these Rust Belt states. Of course, Joe Biden flipped them back, but the margins weren't anything spectacular. And with this 0.63% margin, I think definitely Donald Trump can flip back Wisconsin in 2024. Um, for uh, the second state I have is Arizona. I do think Donald Trump will win the state of Arizona back in 2024 if it were to run against Kamala Harris. Um, just demographically, Kamala Harris does not appeal to them demographically. Um, you know, she, you know, Arizona has a lot of Latino voters and voters of Hispanic descent. You know, this was a state that Joe Biden won by 0.3%. Uh, go back 2016, Trump won it by 3.5%. So, you know, it was still a 4% shift to the left for Joe Biden. But Kamala Harris, again, she is the weaker candidate. She is much less popular than Joe Biden. And just because of that, I, I don't see her holding on to this state. Although Mark Kelly and Kirsten Sinema are the two Democratic senators here, I think they appeal to voters in Arizona much better than Kamala Harris does. So that is why I'm going to have to give Arizona back to Donald Trump. But of course, these are all tilt states, so it could go either way. But I think Trump has the advantage in these states. For Kamala Harris, I will give her Michigan as well as Pennsylvania. I think these two states will go to Kamala Harris. Of course, tilt margins, very, very narrow margins, I expect, in these states. Um, they are still more democratic, uh, democratic than Wisconsin. Um, this essentially, um, you know, splits the Rust Belt in in half, um, with Wisconsin, Iowa, Indiana, and Ohio being red, and Pennsylvania, Michigan, Illinois, and Minnesota being blue. So I do think that Min Michigan and Pennsylvania will stay blue, while Wisconsin flips back to being red. Um, so this gives Harris 257, Donald Trump 242. With three states to go, I'm going to give Kamala Harris Nevada. This was a state that, of course, Joe Biden won in 2020, as well as Hillary Clinton in 2012, and Barack Obama in 2008, who won it by 12.5%. But before this, it was a red state. This state does go red sometimes, um, but it does go blue more than red. It's like Florida, except Democrats do better here. Um, well, in Florida, Republicans do typically do better. That's why they have Republicans running the government there in Florida, even though Obama won the state quite a few times. But Nevada, I think the margin will go under 2%. I think she'll do worse than Joe Biden, as well as even Hillary Clinton, who did surprisingly well. Um, she did very good with Hispanics, which really did help her. But I don't think Kamala Harris has that edge with Hispanics that Hillary Clinton had. Um, Hillary Clinton had a problem with African-American voters, which is something that Kamala Harris does not have, which is why I will give her North Carolina. I think that North Carolina, this has been a state that has been moving to left for a very long time. It was only 1% for Trump in 2020. And Kamala Harris, as an African-American, she will appeal to those voters there. And with this demographics in general shifting to the left, I think Kamala Harris has a very, very strong chance at flipping North Carolina. And the final state I have on this map is the state of Georgia. This will be another tilt state for Vice President Harris. 16 electoral votes from Georgia. Same thing, you know, same reasoning with North Carolina, honestly. Um, you know, she does better with African-American voters as an African-American herself, as a woman as well. I think she'll definitely get Democrats to turn out for him and, you know, turn out for her in Georgia, just like Warnock and Ossoff got in Georgia in early January. So Georgia, that will go to Kamala Harris. And finally, the second district of Nebraska, I think will be tilt for Kamala Harris. I think she'll hold on to it um, because this is not a typically Democratic district and it has historically been red. 
but I think Kamala Harris will hold on to that. This was a district that Biden won by 6.6%. So thank you guys so much for watching. This is my completed 2024 presidential election map between Vice President Kamala Harris and former President Donald Trump. Um, you know, my reasoning in many of these states is just, you know, look at the favorability of Kamala Harris, only plus 4%. Compare that to Joe Biden, who won re-election, or not won re-election, but won the 2020 presidential election by, you know, just around 4 or 5% in the popular vote, and he only has a plus 11% approval rating. So I think Kamala Harris's favorability is definitely hurting her, and, you know, she's just less liked than Joe Biden just in general. And even though Donald Trump's favorability is so low, um, he's proved that he's been able to get over that because America is a conservative country. There are more conservatives than there are liberals. Um, that is just a fact, but that is changing. There are more and more liberals now uh, in the 21st century. So Kamala Harris, 296 electoral votes holding on to most of the Biden state. She would lose Wisconsin as well as Arizona, but she would pick up the state of North Carolina for the Democratic Party for the first time since 2008, while for Donald Trump, he would of course flip Arizona and Wisconsin while holding on to Florida and Texas. So thank you guys so much for watching this video. Make sure you join my Discord server if you have not, the link to which is at the very top of the description below. Like this video if you enjoyed it. Comment down below who you think would win in this scenario and which calls you think I made that were flawed in your opinion. Comment all of that down below or who you think will win the 2024 presidential election or what is the most likely matchup. Subscribe to my channel if you have not and I will see you guys in the next video.